Alright, making a video. Yeah, draft physics video. Production. Ah, presentation. Caught me again. Anyway, I will get to Sabine Hassenfeffer, who's apparently, or Hassenfelder, whatever, uh, going to defend the nonsense science of dark energy and dark matter, which are obviously, if you were to make a comparison, it would be like saying it's legitimate courtroom behavior to speculate about invisible men who could have done the crime and could have been setting up my poor client with fake evidence. It's perfectly reasonable courtroom behavior. No, it isn't. And dark energy and dark matter are not scientific theories. They're just desperate little hopes. <laughs> you know. So anyway, getting to the unscientific uh, comments. It's just no point, really. So it's just <laughs> I just know uh, talking to the wind because you know, frankly, the wind's smarter than you people. So uh, that's why the Pope likes so-called refugees. Lots of unresistant brown bodies he can spill his virus on. You know, it all makes brilliant sense. So you know, white people don't become fanatically Christian. Oh, that never happens. White people don't. There's no ignorant white people in the world who live like pigs and you know have have completely um, you know mockable. Uh, behavior? No, that never happens. White people are never embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, sure they aren't. Oh, now that too many white bodies have herd, uh, herd immunity, whatever that is. Now that too many white bodies have her herd immunity. What? How could that even make sense? Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. You are way too fucking stupid. Go away. Ugh. All right. <clears throat> so another dumb comment, frankly. Hey, Gary, found that the Eddington experiment was redone. No, it wasn't. I've already been over this like six times now. All right. Amateur philo uh, uh, f f f <laughs> An amateur ast astronomer. Less than telescope. Less than camera. Less than uh, procedure. Right. And so it's somehow he did it. So you're just doing this, he did it again, crap. And you didn't really look at the paper, right? Because if you did, you'd see these horrible, he only chose two little images of the actual crap. And they're obviously square pixels. I mean, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so bad. Um, I mean, this is just, there's just no point in talking to you people. All right, well, yeah. well, it wasn't redone with modern technology in any way. It wasn't improved. It wasn't anything. It's already a hard experiment, and you hear they're doing it with lesser than 1900 technology, and I'm supposed to pay attention. Well, I already have paid attention. You've already wasted. I've already had my time wasted. And, and you're sitting there not sure why the telescope needed to be seven degrees from the sun. So you, you can't even figure out what the corona is. <laughs> if you look in the corona, it's you're cheating, essentially, because it's full of particles and crap. Uh, but anyway, uh, but it does show some interesting results. Well, interesting to you. I don't know what the fuck you could glean as interesting, but you can't see anything. There's absolutely no real data. There's just his approximations of what the data says so there's nothing to analyze um, so what's the point yeah that's right there's no point um, so obviously it hasn't been written up in any real journal yet so obviously I think some other um, astronomers maybe were a little bit suspect that this was of a high enough caliber experiment to be um, cited as some sort of source of real evidence but it wasn't the Eddington experiment. The Eddington experiment involves taking pictures of something. <laughs> you have to actually take, and you have to have the capacity. I mean, you know, Eddington was expecting in his slides 10,000 stars. I mean, that's how much resolution his telescope had. This guy was lucky to get a couple of dozen. Yeah. I mean, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, yeah, whatever. It's just a constant barrage of bullshit. So this magnet thing now. So, oh yes, I've already talked about this too. I mean, it's it's not a real 
interesting subject anymore that they can magnetize these these rubber materials these rubber ferrous kind of materials and they can magnetize them very specifically so they can magnetize actual designs into the magnet make a key out of it they can do all kinds of things because they can magnetize a tiny little bit of the structure in different orientations and they already do that with refrigerator magnets, right? The, the magnetism goes this way, this way, you know, and this way, and then this way. And by doing it all these different ways, one side of the magnet is a really dull magnet, and the other side is really sticky. Um, whatever. Okay, so, you know, I've never actually seen this be that before. Yeah, well, I know. You've never seen it directly, but it's been around quite a while. Let's put it that way. I mean, you've sort of seen it when you've seen refrigerator magnets, but, uh, you know, and you can turn them on each other and turn them and you'll feel it. You'll feel the fact that they have resistance at certain points. They lock and then at certain points they unlock and then they lock and they unlock. But whatever. Um, <clears throat> fine, whatever. Not terribly interesting, I don't think. But whatever. I'm just going to delete it because it's... It's old news, and it doesn't say anything theoretically about physics. It doesn't make, you know, bent space a, a reasonable theory. So, I don't even know what this stuff means, but whatever. Uh, I'll remove that since it's there to be removed. All right, so back to this crap. I mean, I hate even talking about these subjects because they're just so loop-de-doo and full of zero evidence of any kind of real form. It's... So it's a, this is a gravitational wave kind of subject. They don't have any real evidence they're doing any of the stuff they claim they're doing. Um, <clears throat> you know, this hunt for the, the dark matter bullshit. Um, and again, it's they've used the theory to defend all the crappy math for their gravitational lensing. You know, their crappy uh, model of how galaxies work. Um, it's just a desperate effort to try to make... Um, they're wrong theories. They're theories that don't match the evidence. They're trying to make them match the evidence by creating fake evidence. And it's that simple. And so that's scientific. Making fake evidence, making shit up, making an invisible man to play some role in your theory is scientific. Well, I don't think so. I don't think so by a long shot. I have noticed that each time I talk about dark energy or dark matter, I get a lot of comments from people saying, oh... Oh, you are so fucking full of shit. Do you get that one? I mean, please. I mean, why why are you complaining about how some physics is ungrounded <laughs> and then you're accepting the most ungrounded physics there is? I mean, what are you? I mean, your name, you just change it to hi hypocritical feather. <laughs> that stuff doesn't exist. You can't just invent something invisible each time there's an inconvenient measurement. Physicists have just totally lost it. That's right. They totally lost it a long time ago. The whole Einstein thing, no evidence of this bent space. It doesn't make any fucking sense in three dimensions. It's a silly theory. It doesn't account for anything. It doesn't explain anything. It's a totally useless pile of mush. And this whole notion that you've somehow made time into a dimension somewhere that you can bend and warp and there's absolutely no evidence any of that crap happens. You've turned physics into some sort of mathematical formula that has a bunch of loopholes in it, gigantic ones. And now you can play stupid... I mean, Feynman wasted years of his life playing with stupid models where he could make an electron go back in time, you know, to cause events. What's the point of that shit? I mean, it's so stupid. Yeah, I, I don't know. How, how are you going to counter-argue the it's so stupid argument? This is such a common misunderstanding that I... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, un we misunderstand the Invisible Man theory is really viable. And there's a bunch of poor criminals in jail because nobody allowed the, uh, the Invisible Man argument. Because clearly the Invisible Man has been framing people for decades. Shit. I thought I will dedicate a video to sorting this out. Yeah, five whole fucking minutes. Thanks. Dark energy and dark matter are entirely normal and perfectly scientific. Right, normal by your standards of what science is, which we don't need any fucking evidence, and if it makes our math work, it's a great theory. 
Look, I mean, the whole the whole existence of all this anti-crap only came up because some loop de doo direct guy, you know, found some silly mathematical equation where he could he could invert protons and electrons and create an anti-universe and the anti-universes would collide with the I mean it's just all such a pile of shit and so you know they invented this stupid loophole now oh there's a whole bunch of this fake matter so there's not even dark matter and dark energy there's all these anti-particles for which somehow we can't account for their energy where the hell did they come from where is their mass where are they Oh, oh, that's right. They don't fucking. There's no place to put them. There's no room inside of atoms for a bunch of antiparticles. So why are you messing with a theory that doesn't? There's no. There's not even any rational room for this bullshit. Hypothesis. They may turn out to be wrong, but that. No, oh, they may turn out to be wrong. Like Hansel and Gretel is a really bad theory of uh, you know <laughs> gingerbreadery. <laughs> what? What? It's just just. They may turn out to be wrong. They may turn out to be never proven. Yes, yeah, so we'll just have to leave them. Well, it was never disproven. Yes, the three bear theory. Does mean it's wrong to consider them in the first place. It's wrong to consider something that looks like a piece of crap and smells like a piece of crap and has every fucking feature of crap as just an excuse. Just something to put it on because you want to you want to you want to get paid by your client, so you need to you know get him off, and so you'll try any trick in the book to solve your problem, and that's what it, if it looks like that, then you don't do it. Before I say anything else, here is a brief reminder what dark energy and dark matter are. Oh yes, silly pushes and pulls for which there's no accounting for where they come from or how they got there or why they're there at all. They're just magical little convenient things to 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 make something happen, to make events happen. So we don't have to have real causes, we just make up some new thing, some invisible thing that doesn't have any properties and therefore we can't see it. Dark energy is what speeds up the expansion of the universe. Right. Uh, the whole theory of expansion is based on such thin, weak, silly little evidence. We already know you can bend spectral lines with, you know, <clears throat> uh, materials and magnetism and polarization. And you can do different things that are, you know, curious phenomena. And so clearly these aren't as reliable as we think they are. And so things like redshift... It's perfectly reasonable to think maybe that's the thing that isn't as quite as reliable as your theory thinks. Maybe you don't have it quite down exactly how that works. And that maybe you shouldn't build a whole silly theory that the universe is flying apart at supersonic speeds um, with a bunch of fake velocity. Because a bunch of nothing is being pumped into the universe everywhere. Between every object, between me and this uh, smoker. There's a bunch of empty space being pumped in. <sighs> you know, please. I mean, they're, these are silly guesstimates. I mean, they're silly. I have a bent, I have a bent space maker. What, what, what do you mean you do? A bent space gun. It does not behave like normal energy. Dark matter has a gravitational pull like normal matter, but you can't see it. Right, it has no properties. It has, it's unlike everything else in the universe, it has a consequence. Somehow this little magic thing doesn't have any consequences. You can put it somewhere and there's no way to know it's there except for the fact that it makes mysterious space-sucking power. You know, it's doing the convergent thing. Right again, it's not bending space. It's sucking space. That's what it has to do in three dimensions. It has to suck the space. And then there's some other thing, dark energy, that's barfing space. I mean, how can they sit there and seriously defend this as anything else but, uh, yeah, you know, we took so we were smoking some weed and we just came up with any old kind of wacky solution because we really didn't want to do any hard work and think about causes and effects and having things mechanically consistent. You know, we didn't worry about any of that shit. Dark energy and dark matter are two different things. They may be related, but currently we have no... No, they're, they're doing exactly the opposite function, right? I mean, the the, the dark matter is sucking space 
and the dark energy is making space. <laughs> Just space. They're making nothing and filling the nothings. You know, the, the oh, all this heavy nothing that you know they're you know i mean it just doesn't the whole theory is just so stupid to think that the universe's pressure is being mitigated by these invisible machines that produce the jello and then consume the jello <sighs> reason to think that they are related why have physicists come up with this dark stuff well we have two theories to describe the behavior of matter Right, two stupid theories to start with. You have bent space, nonsense, time dimension, crapola. You know, time is obviously just some linear thing. It takes time for stuff to move in the universe. Therefore, it takes time for the universe to change. But it changes in one direction. It doesn't change dimensionally. Um, anyway, and, and uh, quantum mechanics, you know, which... Just go ahead and make up your own version of it because no, there is no quantum mechanics. There really isn't any quantum mechanics anymore because their versions of it are so different and so bizarrely um, estranged from each other. You know, one guy's making up new universes, another guy's giving photons all these magical powers. I mean, there's no consistent theory. The one is the standard model of particle physics, which describes the elementary particle. So again, just more bullshit. The elementary particles are the ones you can actually manipulate and that you actually know exist and it always comes out consistent and there's huge um, uh, equilibrium and um, conservation. Huge conservation. No conservation problems, really. And the rest of all that crap. So that's the electron, the proton, and the photon. The rest of that crap is completely unnecessary because there is no real evidence that it needs. you need to invent it in the first place. And they're only inventing it because they don't have a rational theory of how energy transmits between the field and the objects. Because they think the field is doing something. They're just etherists and this is just the consequence of creating some dopey ether. ...and the forces between them except gravity. The other is Einstein's theory of general relativity. Yes, well, whatever. So she's saying that the standard model, not quantum mechanics, but I mean, it is quantum mechanics because they've given all these things, these special spin powers, all kinds of bullshit. Uh, you know, uh, electrons are dipoles. What? How, I was saying, how are they? How can they be a dipole? They're negatively charged on all their sides. They're not, they're not a dipole. Gravity, which describes the gravitational force that is generated by with this fake eight pi, right? That should be four pi times g, right? Because that's what normal things are. That's but that's the speed. That's that's how light is affected. Is what that extra little eight bit, um, you know. So that only affects pho photons. <clears throat> So I don't know what formula she's using, but that looks like the photon formula. But anyway, I, I mean, right. So we have this general relativity that, that claims these bizarre things, that photons are more affected by twice as much, twice as affected by gravity than all the other forms of matter in the universe. Photons are special. Um, <clears throat> for no rational reason should we believe any of this crap. Um, and it merely the only thing the equation really did that has any merit and clearly it was con it was contrived to do it einstein's formulas he was told explain the perilium of mercury or whatever right the the ah uh, the, the the obtuse orbit and so he was given months to design a formula that would explain it nobody does the formula nobody has knows how to even do the formula it's so complex and it's a really simple thing, right? If you just argue the sun's processing, the center of the sun, uh, you already explained why Mercury's affected, because the sun's processing. Uh, well, anyway, it's just, this is just, so, so this is all, this is all rock solid science is her implication. That somehow this stupid standard model gibberish with these fake little muons, puons, leptons, whatever, quarks, all this crap that there's no hard evidence ever exists. They only exist for milliseconds inside of, uh, you know, um, their their instruments. 
and uh, they're just so confident all this crap is real. And now they're explaining that, well, you know, our our super bullshit theories of dark energy and dark matter create a conduit between these two nonsense theories. And they're 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 nonsense. They're they're not even good science. They're so barely evidenced so thinly again you can make a rational argument defending a, a, the invisible man did it in every court case that ever takes place you could explain how the invisible man poured the blood on his shirt you could explain how it's obviously the invisible man did it that's what they're doing they're making theories that are so that, that have so many special properties that they can evade all rational inspection there's no way to actually see the truth because all of their their, their instruments of, of cause and effect are made of invisible man type uh, uh, forces that have all these magical properties but no rational explanation. Again, why would photons be twice as affected by gravity? What is the sensible argument? There's no reasoning that defends that. All types of matter and energy. Problem is, if you use Einstein's theory for the matter that is in the standard model only, this does not describe what we see. The predictions you get from combining those two theories do not fit to the observations. It's not only one prediction that does not... <laughs> right, so, so instead of figuring out that maybe one or both of those models are wrong, that they're just wrong, it's wrong to give photons twice, and twice as affected by gravity, well, that was a mistake. It was wrong to think... Um, Somehow, uh, redshift is being created by space being pushed into the universe. I mean, that might have been a wrong, stupid idea. Wrong, 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 wrong. There's another reason why it's redshifted. That ain't the reason. Fit to observations, it's many different ones. For dark matter, it's that galaxies rotate too fast, galaxies and clusters move too fast, Gravitation. You know, they don't even have any real science of, of these galaxy rotation theories. You know, you can't, you know, you can't find any real physics discussion about the mechanics of galaxies. And that's kind of disappointing. So it's obviously something just the astronomer types are doing in some private room somewhere where they're doing their math and figuring this out. But I, I just I find it kind of amazing that in all these descriptions, all they care about is the black holes they put in the center of the galaxy and they don't pay any attention to the fact that the arms of the galaxy are like physically thick objects they're densities of matter you know they're not in the shape of a planet but they might as well be and that those things can be orbiting around each other galaxies are exactly unlike solar systems in the sense that there's an equal balance on both sides of galaxies galaxies have a symmetry that solar systems don't it's not the same gravitational mechanics if there was another earth on the other side of the sun opposite our earth that would be a real difference in the mechanics <clears throat> lenses bend light too strongly and neither the cosmic microwave background nor galactic filaments would look like we observe them without dark matter oh whatever so yes so so because we have we've labeled these these things that are taking place in space these filaments that are you know billion light years across or something <laughs> it's not real yeah, yeah i mean it's a blob of of matter uh you know density of gas or whatever they think it is, um, plasmas. Um, so again, they, they want to force an answer. And so that's all they're doing. They're just saying, look, we, this, we saw something. We don't quite understand how it got configured. The universe is billions of years old. We don't know exactly how it evolves or why it evolved, that kind of thing and this kind of thing. And they want an immediate answer. They, they want to solve the problem now. They don't have nearly enough evidence to solve it, so they just make up silly godlike explanations. It's just religion, okay? I mean, you could say that the first invention of God was science. It was perfectly good science for them to, to draw these silly conclusions. No, they were silly conclusions. I mean, it was silly back then to sit there and say, well, because I can look down at ants and I manipulate ants, therefore there must be some bigger thing looking down at me and manipulating me, you know? That's not a very good chain of logic. I explained this in detail in an earlier video. 
For dark energy, the shooting gun's signature is that the expansion of the universe is getting faster, which you can find out by observing how fast supernovae in other galaxies speed away from us. The evidence for dark energy is not... So, Ken, they don't see them speed away from us. They're just saying, again, redshift. So it's all based on the fact that this phenomenon of redshift takes place with distance in the universe. And because they're assuming the only way you can make redshift is to shove extra space between things to force them to be further apart, that's the only way you can do it. There's no other mechanism that could possibly be changing the character of the light, like the fact that the light actually does hit atoms as it's traveling through space, transparent atoms, and that their phase gets changed as those pieces of the photon travel through atoms. No, instead of some rational theory that the light scatters um, and that that scatter has a, changes its, its um, frequency, no, fuck that. Let's go with the this. You know, we, they've they've already committed to uh, uh, the the three bears existing, and so, you know, their willingness to create all kinds of other wacky, the talking duck, and the, you know, the, the wise owl, and whatever. Yes, they're willing to go all the other places. Quite as strong as for dark matter. I explained this too in an earlier video. So what's the scientists to do when they are faced with such a discrepancy between theory and observation? The they should consider that it's, uh, <clears throat> their theory might be wrong. That's what they should consider. <laughs> yeah, That their original assumptions might be garbage. They look for new regularities in the observation and try to find a simple way to explain them. And that's what dark energy and dark matter are. No, they are just contrivances. They are magical solutions. They have every appearance of being a contrivance and a convenience because you've decided they don't have any of these properties you would associate with matter. Matter has, matter has byproducts. Matter does stuff. Matter decays. Matter does all kinds of things, and none of this dark matter is doing any of that. It's not creating, and, and it relies on this whole notion that there's some other kind of actual stuff in the universe, some new kind of, you know, beyond the 100 elements, some magical, another, another periodic table somewhere, you know, you have no evidence for the existence of this other periodic table. They are extremely simple terms to add to Einstein's theory that explain observed regularities and make the theory agree with data again. Mm. This is easy to see when it comes to dark energy because the presently accepted version of dark energy is just a constant, the so-called cosmological constant. This cosmological constant is just a constant of nature, and it's a free parameter in general. So, it, it, but see, now she's talking like it doesn't have any consequence. The physical consequence of this constant is their claim that space itself is expanding. The things aren't actually moving. Like, this doesn't move away from me, like a physical reason. It doesn't have actual forces affecting it, moving it changing where its position is, that somehow the space itself has just transported us to different locations and we didn't have to gain any velocity to do it. We just moved to different locations and there's, so it just breaks all of force law. Because you kind of know that force does have to be forced into people. It has to be forced into objects. If you force it in too fast, they fall apart. There's, real, there's a real change that happens to substances when you give them velocity, when you accelerate them. And they're just pretending, we don't, we don't have to do any of that. We, we can just transport to further away. We just, that's essentially all they're doing. They're just saying we transported to a new location in space because of this magic space creation, distance creation. It's just a magical way to create distance. So that's mathematically possible. Sure, you can match mathematically certainly put in a function that just keeps making extra space in the universe. But is there any good reason to do that? Is there any reason to think the universe actually works that way? And there is no good reason. There's just this tiny bit of evidence, this redshift problem, and this is the silly solution. All the photon frequencies get bigger because there's space being pushed in between all of the bits of the photon. 
they're just magically being spread apart by this extra space that's pumping into the photons. I mean, it's, it's silly. Relativity. Indeed, it was introduced already by Einstein himself. And what explanation for an observation could possibly be simpler than a constant of nature? For dark matter... Okay, so again, what could be simpler than just making it up, making up a new uh, existing thing? So you just make up the idea of an invisible man and then you argue for defending it. And I'm just saying, maybe all these other ass suckers, uh, you know, fall for this crap. You just decided invisible man is a real thing in the universe, like gremlins or pixies or some other little magical character. And now we'll all agree that they exist. The pixies exist. And now we can make the universe do all kinds of different things. And we can have all kinds of different explanations for everything that happens because now we have pixies in the universe. That's all this is. This is, you know, and that's not, I, I don't know, calling that scientific, you know, r resorting to the pixie solution. No, that's not scientific. That's religious. It's not quite as simple as that. I frequently hear the criticism that dark matter explains nothing because it can be distributed in arbitrary amounts wherever needed. And therefore, it, it is distributed in arbitrary amounts wherever needed. That's what it is done. It's never put where they don't want it because it'll fuck everything up. So they just put it where they need it. That's clearly what they're doing. It's not that you can do that. One of the evidence that it's not a scientific theory, one of the reasons why a person might argue it's not a scientific theory is that there's every evidence that the invisible man only exists when you need him to and he never exists when you don't need him to and that doesn't sound like science it can fit any observation but that's just wrong it's wrong for two reasons first the word matter in dark matter well, well let's understand the the real truth is is that they never put dark matter in places where their equations work. They never do it. So we're supposed to believe that the only place the dark matter is, is where they need it, and it doesn't fuck up anything else. So the places where it doesn't exist, and it isn't necessary to the function, magically it doesn't fuck up the mechanics at all. Because it doesn't exist there. It only exists where the mechanics are fucked up. Now, isn't that just way too convenient? I mean, it's so silly to say, I'm going to create these new pixies and they don't break anything. Okay, they just fix everything. They just fix all the broken bits and they never touch anything else. They never scratch your Mercedes. They never do anything. No, they only fix the broken parts. Ugh. This is, you know, this is just... I, I, it's just so disappointing. I mean, this is an educated, intelligent woman, and she, here she is just showing how they're all just whores for their religion. I mean, she's totally, you know, ruining all sense of any credibility she might have had in making arguments against some of the weak conclusions that have been drawn by physics. So here she is talking about, you know, how they've, you know, bent statistical data to suit their models and done this and cheated and sent... And here she's just so guilty of the same crime. It's her religion, she'll defend it. This is a Christian mocking the theories of the Muslim. <laughs> you know, it's a joke. It doesn't just vaguely mean stuff. It's a technical term that means stuff with a very specific behavior. Dark matter behaves like normal matter, except that, for all we currently know, it doesn't... It doesn't do anything regular matter does. So it doesn't reflect anything, it doesn't absorb anything, it doesn't affect anything. So unlike regular matter that we know has bits in it, the bits can react to the rest of the universe, energy goes through it and reacts to it, it gets hot, it does all these things. Dark matter just does one thing, it makes magical gravity. And that's it, it bends space and it doesn't do a fucking other thing, nothing else... No other possible interactions. Just bending space. That's all it can do. It just bends space conveniently. But it doesn't do anything else. It doesn't interact with energy. So it's matter, it's mass that doesn't interact with energy. I mean, it makes no fucking sense. It does not have internal pressure. You cannot explain any arbitrary observation by attributing it to matter. It just happens to be the case that the observations we do have 
can be explained this way. That's a non. Yes, no. It just it just happens that matter interacts with energy, and it's there. But there was no reason for us to believe that that has some uh, uh, that there's a reason. Like the electrons, protons, and neutrons have properties, and those are fixed properties, and you can't, you know. <laughs> No, we can just make a whole new kind of matter where all the electrons, protons, and neutrons are invisible. They don't react to energy. <laughs> they don't react to each other then, right? Because it's energy that's mitigating their control. So, I mean, it's just, it doesn't make any sense how, well, we haven't demonstrated that matter has to have properties. Well, yeah, we sort of have demonstrated that mass does have to have properties. Trivial fact. Let me emphasize that dark matter in cosmology is a kind of fluid. It does not have any substructure. Particle physicists needless to... So there's no point. It's, it's a kind of fluid that has no structure. Do you, do you, do you, I mean, <laughs> that's exactly like Susskind, right? It's an anti-divergence. Because he doesn't want to say convergence. So he calls it an anti-divert... It's anti-diverting. I mean, this is just... <laughs> <laughs> it's a fluid that has no properties. So, so yeah, I can, I can, that makes sense. So, again, it's like they're waves that don't have any substance, right? They're magical waves that aren't really energy, that aren't really an event, that don't require cause and effect. Ugh, this is so bad. Say, like the idea that dark matter is made of a particle. This may or may not be the case. We currently do not have any observation that tells us dark matter must have a microscopic substructure. Well, it wouldn't work anyway if you just make it out of a particle, little particle, little particle, little part. You're not going to get enough mass to do anything. Your dark matter has to have a lot more mass to it to bend your galaxies and do all the other crap you want it to do. So it's not going to be made out of no little particle. It's going to have to be made out of some kind of matter. That's why it's called dark matter because it can't just be a little particle. The other reason why it's wrong to say that dark matter can fit anything is that you cannot distribute it as you wish. Dark matter starts with a random distribution in the early universe. As the universe expands and matter in it cools, dark matter starts to clump and... Why? Why does it do that? Just it only clumps with dark matter, so it's gravitational but it only clumps to other dark matter. So somehow it's only gravitational to dark matter. So only dark matter clumps somehow. Somehow it doesn't clump to light. It doesn't stick to the moon or it doesn't stick to some other thing. It just sticks to itself. <laughs> and it happens to do it in this way that's completely the opposite of what you would expect gravitational bodies to do in the sense that it creates nice little perfect rings right around the galaxy. <laughs> It doesn't go into the galaxy. It doesn't do any of the stuff a material substance would do, something that was affected by gravity. So it behaves as if it's not affected by gravity. It, yes, it's supposed to be producing gravity. So it's denting space, but it's impervious to the already existing dents in space. I mean, the whole thing is just such crap. And it forms structures. Normal matter then collects in the gravitational potentials generated by the dark matter. So you do not get to distribute matter as you wish. It has to fit with the dynamical evolution of the universe. All right, let's understand. We don't have any pictures of the evolution of the universe, so to speak. We can only look back in time uh, by, you know, seeing old photons um, <clears throat> and get some vague notions of how things work. But, they, you know, again, they, they, they're they taking a tiny bit of evidence, creating a whole big elaborate, well, there's, there's heaven, and then there's double heaven, and the third level heaven. They're just making up a Dianetics thing here. This is just like Scientology or something. They're just making up a, a theory. They'll just add a few aliens and volcanoes and, you know, different mechanisms. And it's, it's just all made out. It's all just made up. There's no real evidence indicating any of these features exist. This is why dark matter and dark energy are good scientific explanations. They are simple, and yet they explain a lot of data. Now, to be clear... Well, again, the Invisible Man theory, so, every, so she should just advocate that every lawyer go into court and just keep pushing this, yeah, gremlins. Gremlins are nasty little fuckers. They're framing people all the time. Uh, you know, 
It's, it's a perfectly viable theory. I mean, think about it. Invisible gremlins answers why all the stupid things that happen in the world happen. You know, every single accident, every, there's no, no, gremlins are doing it. <sighs> this is the standout story. If you look into the details, it is, as usual, more complicated. That's because the galactic structure... If you look into the details, you'll see that the evidence is almost non-existent. There's almost no real physical evidence for any of this or any reason to believe it. There's just a tiny little weird phenomenon, some little weirdness, and they've turned it into a whole gigantic religion. The one little weirdness is a huge religion. ...that form with dark matter actually do not fit the data all that well and they do not explain some regularities that astronomers have observed. So there are good reasons for being skeptical that dark matter is ultimately the right story. But it isn't as... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's, and, and the most fundamental reason is the first reason, which is it has every appearance of being a convenient contrivance a made-up pile of crap that doesn't have to obey any rules that everything else has to obey. So you've broken all of physics, the basic function of it, to create something outside the normal physics, the invisible gremlin, to solve the problem. And that has every of appearance of just being a gremlin theory. Simple as just saying, it's unscientific. Thanks for watching. It's unreasonable, it's stupid, it's retarded, it's, it's like I said, uh, it's, it's, it's almost embarrassing as a religion, it's so silly. A desperate bullshit effort. See you next week. <sighs> so anyway, needed to be done. Like I said, start off as a likable character, and but... I mean, that was just such a pitiful rationalization, defending the physics she's involved with. <laughs> you know, there's a little per part of the religion. Well, no, you get rid of that other part, you know, that, that Holy Ghost story and everything else, but my Jesus story is real. <sighs> yeah, sure it is. So anyway. Again, I'll just, I've said it so many times, weak evidence isn't a good foundation for hard theory. And the point is, is they talk about this stuff without, oh, there's reason to be skeptical. They don't do that. They talk about it as if this is the really good theory. We're right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, it's really evidenced. It's really the, yeah, this is, this is the right answer. They're not even close to admitting this is just something we made up that works, but it, you know doesn't look like a right answer because yeah it looks like a, a gremlin theory it has every appearance of being a gremlin theory weak evidence the point is, is this whole this physics is based on really incredibly weak evidence they haven't compiled a whole bunch of facts to demonstrate there can't be another answer and yet they're talking as if there can't be another answer <sighs> Till the next time, such. Meh. Yeah. Yeah.